Hey guys, this is Ryan Mueller, and I am a MSP consultant working at ProvelTech. And today you're going to learn some advanced tips and tricks when working with Automate Scripting, along with a deeper understanding of how to use parameters within PowerShell scripts and why you may want to build them this way moving forward. Starting out, I wanted to go through an example script that you can find a link to in the description. Uh, I built this script just for this video and it's meant to create an admin account, either a local admin or a domain admin, depending on the machine you're running it on. If you run it on a domain controller, it will create a domain admin and it will randomly generate the password currently set to at least 16 characters, uh, but it will randomize between 16 and 21 characters. The script can dynamically be used to change the username, title, and display name of any user and will automatically update a password ID that's located in Automate under that client with the correct information. If the password ID already exists, it will use the password that's in there so you can use it to deploy your own passwords that you specify uh, without generating a random string. Let's kind of go through the process of the script a little bit before we get into the PowerShell. The first section of this just kind of checks to see if the password ID or the password title that's pro provided when you run the script exists in the system. If it does exist, it will use that password out of the system. Otherwise, it will jump to the create password section and generate a random string and will eventually insert that password into the database with the title that you specified. The next part of this script is going to be writing the actual PowerShell script to the machine. This is a uh, script generated from ChatGPT and I have tested it and it does work to either create a brand new domain or local admin or update the password to an existing domain or local admin. This can be used to deploy your technician domain admin account across the board. You just need to be conscious of what machines you're running it on and that the parameters are all provided and correct. The next piece of this is actually this uh, line 33. It takes the command history. If you go to the commands tab of the machine, it will now show redacted for the actual command itself. This is because as a part of our shell command that we're running, we are submitting the password in plain text when we issue the command. So this is a security measure that uh, we're doing just to ensure we can't view the password just from the command history and it's fully encrypted using the password table. I'll get into the PowerShell script in just a little bit. Uh, the next piece of this is uh, is going to be just updating the password within the system or inserting a brand new password entry into the table. And lastly, it will uh, clean up the folder at the end just to ensure the script does not remain on the system after creating the domain admin or local admin. Now the main question you might have is why would you want to create a PowerShell script that requires parameters and run it this way. The main reason why you may want to is because Security applications require or can exclude the PowerShell script based on its hash. And if you create a PowerShell script that does not ever change, 
you can exclude the hash of it and run it with it fully excluded in the system and not have something that uh, gets changed every time with a different password or different username, different parameters type of a thing. So if you have a security application that allows excluding the like a specific PowerShell script based on its hash, this might be a good script to use as a template. One thing that I added in here to help you in that is this generate hash info parameter. If you run this script with just that value set to one, it will jump to this section and simply send an email to the user that ran the script and display both the MD5 and SHA-256 hashes in the email so then you can exclude it from your security software. One thing to note with this is the reason why we're deleting this folder at the end of it and it's disabled right now but it won't be in the template. Uh, the reason why we're de deleting that is because if we are excluding that script and from all your security software it's a security risk to leave it on the machine so it's very a very good idea to remove it just so people can't take that script elsewhere and maliciously use it to create domain or local admins um, machines one other thing that's useful to note is because we are inserting data into this SQL database using SQL commands, we do have to be conscious of any special characters that may interfere with that those insert commands. So that is why we are replacing all of these random characters uh, just because it causes some issues when you are doing the importing. So we are just taking all these problematic characters and changing them into something that won't cause an issue. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something good out of this video. Let us know what else you'd like to see. If you have any questions, please leave your response in the comments section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.